so today I'm here to do a book review of Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is actually my first read for the Magical Readathon, so I've completed one book, so yay to me actually doing something. I'm excited to talk about this sequel, and like I finally started to read some anticipated reads. Like I've only read like 15 this year, and I'm just like shocked at myself, but still, I'm excited to talk about this book, and there's gonna be spoilers. Like, so if you haven't read this book, and especially if you haven't read Renegades, you don't wanna watch this review. It was really good to be back into this world and seeing the story continue and to see what was gonna happen next though because first book didn't end in such a way that was kind of like I really want to know what's gonna happen now and I'm still feeling that because I feel like we didn't get that much from this book. Definitely finish with me like I need the third book because I don't even know what I got in this book and I need more. I do find that these books are slow and they can be somewhat boring. At least this book was a lot smaller than Renegades because Renegades was like over 500 pages and this one was like 470. It's good that there was less page count. Like stuff does happen in the book but it feels like it takes the whole book for it to go anywhere so we just have all of this kind of like we're stuck here and at the end we're like woohoo and then they're just over and I'm just like there is a lot more plot happening for Nova because she doesn't sleep so she's just walking down hallways and then walking to Adrian's house and walking to her home. She's walking down the arcades and she's just walking and she's just thinking a lot and you get four pages of thinking about stuff that we already know about and it's just like... <sighs> I get it. Like, I, do, I get it. Like, do you have to talk about it all the time that she can't sleep? Like, we get it. Just saying, I kind of did forget how epic Nova actually is, though. Like, not sleeping and being able to put people to sleep when you touch them is pretty cool, but for the fact that she's so techy and can make so many gadgets and she's really, really smart, like, she's just an epic person. Just saying, though, does she just, like, not feel joy, though? What she does is just, like, sneer at people and groans and just rolls her eyes, and every time people ask her to go places, she's just like, ugh, as if I'd ever be there. And I'm like, how did no one discover you. Like, you're like Loki a bitch to everyone about everything and I'm just like how did no one figure this out except for Dana but still. And oh my god I feel so bad about this but I forgot that Adrian was like a person of colour. I had a description in my head and then suddenly it was just like he has dark skin and I'm like Oh, wait, what? Like, I just got so confused and I feel so bad about that because it's been like not that long since I read this book, but I guess because I was so bored that I just forgot that there was like epic diversity in this series because we do have these two gay dads and Adrian is a person of colour and then I'm just here like, Pfft. just wiped my mind and it just made me feel weird reading it for the rest of the time because I felt bad that I forgot. I do love Adrian though because he's so adorable and just such a wonderful person and like he just doesn't deserve any of the shit that's been happening. Over in Adrian's relationship is killing me though. Like Nova seriously acts like she never wants a man to touch her like something bad happened to her or something and she just hates people touching her because she's always moving away and every time Adrian touches her she's just like mm mm. And I'm just like, what happened to you, man? Adrian is so oblivious to everything and the whole montage of Nova trying to flirt with him and he being like what? Just figure it out. Just please figure this out so you can put me out of my misery. I have to say, I don't really ship it because I don't think that they are a match and I don't see this relationship working at all. They're literally each other's worst enemies and are they just gonna find out in book three and be like, oh, it's okay though because I love you. I don't want that to happen. I want it so that they won't forgive each other and they're gonna kill each other and it's gonna be a big murderous mess when like obviously these two sides are gonna come together and start fighting. But I hope that Adrian's just like, she is being in my shit this whole time and she's lied to me, I'm gonna go kill her and she's gonna be like, this damn sentinel, I'm gonna kill his ass. Like, I want there to be some epic fight and they don't resolve this relationship. I have to say, I'm so here for Ruby and Oscar though. I'm feeling that maybe Ruby doesn't actually like Oscar because it should not take this long for a couple to get together when they clearly like each other. They just need a kiss already and I feel like so many books do this to side characters where they just don't get together for so long but there's sexual tension and the flirty and I'm like, just... And oh my god, Dana annoyed me with all the judginess in this book. Yes, Nova is evil and you're a renegade and it's what you're meant to do, but we are on the evil side here, bitch, so we do not care if you're a good person. <laughs> I'm so glad that Nova caught one of her butterflies and now she can't form back into a person. And I'm just like, this is cool. Like, this is some cool plot. Even though Dana and Amothorn got Adrian to find Ace Anarchy and, like, take him and now they're going to neutralize him. And I'm like, what the shit, Dana? Like, what are you doing? My absolute favorite part of this book, though, was the Agent N discussion 
options that they had in the book. Like, oh, it is so not the right of the renegades to choose who gets to be super or not. And it's like not anyone's right to decide that. Like, this isn't a decision that people should have. It's just, you know, you're either super or you aren't. There should be no decision. And you can't trust everyone to uphold the rules you have. Because once mistakes start happening and people start to get obsessed with the power of being able to take someone's powers away, what are you going to do? Who do you punish? Because you can't reverse this. And it's just like, how do you handle that situation? With the idea of you act first and you think later, so we should shoot him first before we put him on trial, so many people are going to get misjudged here and you never know what they were trying to do and it's just like so wrong. And the idea too is when Adrian's fathers find out that he's a sentinel, are they going to neutralize him because he is an enemy of the renegades or are they going to be lenient because it's his son? So there shouldn't be emotion in this decision and there just shouldn't be a decision at all. Genesis was evil just so we could have an evil renegade so everything's not just black and white, you know. There was no depth there. She was just a bitch. Especially when she was torturing Hawkthorn and then she was like, we're just gonna like neutralize you so no one knows I was like torturing you. And then that dude just crushes her head in and I was like, you shitting me? And then they blamed it on the Sentinel and I'm like, these people are evil. How do you handle this renegade code shit when you have people like this in your ranks? Nova is so against using Agent N and thinks it's horrible. And she just starts using it on like the people that she doesn't like when she's trying to get Ace's helmet. And I'm like, you are a hypocrite, Nova, because you're all like, oh, no one should have this choice. And then she just starts shooting people and making them all lose their powers. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? They gave her one side to have it because that's the perspective we're in and then the other side shouldn't be allowed to. This argument is for all the sides, all the people, and I was just a bit annoyed about that. I am team anarchist here. The renegades have too much power. They totally use their fame to control people. And if they were the superheroes they claim to be, there would be less crime and less people dying because they'd be more focused on saving people instead of opening gift stores with like memorabilia of their stuff. Like, what is that? It seriously needs to be like a truce between everyone where they can have a conversation and get rid of Agent N and all work together and find a new code or not even have a code but just have a way that everyone can coincide and not fight all the time and figure out how that there can be like an equal balance here. And I honestly don't know if the world was better with the Age of Anarchy or with the Renegades now because of both shit. I feel like with Lady Indomitable, I think that's her name, I think that when she died she wasn't killed by an anarchist. Still haven't found out who did it and you'd think that Nova from being with all the anarchists they would have been like oh yeah that was me but we've never gotten any information about who actually did it it's such a big mystery that what if a renegade actually killed her like what if one of the members of the council killed her because she didn't like one of the decisions and she wanted to do something different so they made sure that she died by looking like she fell off a building like that would be such a good plot twist that the renegades are meant to be all that and then they killed one of their own because they had a disagreement overall i did enjoy this book but like i don't really like have like that much to say because i read it and then straight after Afterwards, I'm like, what was this book about? But still, I am excited for the third book. I have some questions that need them answers, okay? And so it is annoying that I gotta wait until next November. Get here eventually, and then I'll hopefully find out everything I want to know. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.